gezeichnet. So, I think now we are recording the session, I hope. Yeah, I can see it if recorded, but it's okay. So it's the first time hosting a Zoom session for me. And we will start with the presentation, like I mentioned. Whoa, now everything is gone. Do you see the picture? Not yet. Not yet. Okay. Now you see the picture, right? There we go. Okay. Um, so we are a team of, of, of four members, uh, a young company or startup, uh, as you, you would like to say. Um, why we are doing what we are doing is because we are passionate about what we are doing uh, and we care about each other and about our planet. And it started a couple of years ago in Uganda, um, where together with local teams, we formed different projects, mainly in the field of microcredits, uh, very uh, small projects. And from then, we basically saw two main challenges which we faced there. And those challenges are things you are for sure aware of. Um, it's on the one side, the, the big unemployment rates uh, in many countries in this world. Uh, and on the other side, the big waste problem, especially plastic waste problem, which we also faced in almost every country in this world. And we were looking at those two challenges um, in more detail and we're thinking how we could, could change something there or how we could take them as opportunities um, for new solutions. And especially the second one uh, was interesting for us because we had nothing to do with the plastic industry. We had no idea about plastics or anything else. Um, and we realized that in many countries there is no organized waste collection and especially that the machineries um, to process the waste is very expensive. Um, and yeah, there's basically no access to them. And Rafaela will now tell us a little bit what we were doing. Yeah, and so we developed uh, small scale recycling machines. Um, you can see here the shredder, the shredder, one, one back, yes, thank you. <laughs> so the shredder, there you can um, put the material, so the plastic waste into, and it will be shredded through a granulate. And we also developed in the last few, few weeks the manual shredder. It's possible, so it's easy to use and also to send worldwide. And then there you see the extruder where you can fill the granulate above and then you, there will be pressed a big material, for example, for building something. And then you came to our third machine. So it's the injection machine. Um, it's with um, injection molding. You fill also the granulate in this um, cup at the, at the bottom, yeah, at the top. And then with heat and pressure, you fill it in new molds. And so we can create new products, which are not locally needed and make sense. So here you see uh, one of our products, there's a uh, tile and the mold, which um, is used for creating the tile. And um, yeah, we also needed in co-create these products in human-centered design and with design thinking to um, see what's locally needed and for example here the roof tiles there's some real pictures from Uganda and then um, for example um, plant pots and um, rulers and, <clears throat> and abacus and also um, it's very useful to create prototypes also in Europe and Austria so many universities and and, and other organizations use our machinery um, to create new products out of it. Then also the, the machine, our, our tools. So you can see the machines as tools we use, but um, it's nothing without our, the social entrepreneurship trainings. So only the machines and we put them somewhere, it doesn't make sense for us. So we created also the knowledge exchange and the transfer to, to see how I can um, design and create a product by myself and there are four parts the waste management 
Then we have uh, the plastic recycling, the product design, and the social business modeling. As a very so, and now I will switch to CERN because um, uh, one of our cases, he will explain what we developed in the last few weeks. So, and yeah, thank you, Afela. So, <laughs> this project, uh, we started uh, shipping out the machinery to over 28 countries in the last six months on five continents. And they do different uh, projects, they, do, they produce different products. And now with this urgent need uh, at the moment, um, we closely follow the 3D printing community and so on and saw that these face shields are something which there's a huge demand for. Um, and decided uh, three weeks ago that we could easily produce them with our machines as well. And that's what we were doing. And currently we are selling those face shields uh, in Austria and we sold over 3000 pieces in the last two weeks, um, which shows us that there's a big need for them uh, also in, our, in Austria here. But what we are much more interested in it is in this whole process, because like we saw with the machines and with the tools around it, uh, it's very easy to start a small production decentralized almost anywhere where you have access to electrical power and plastic waste. And this shows basically how it's done. So it's, you need the waste, one of them shredding machines, so either one of our solution or the industrial recycling solution. Um, then you get out the granules, you heat it, inject it into the, the bow of the face shield. And then there's always this transparent shield in front, which you can either source from a pre-cutted PET shield foil, or you can use two liter PET bottles um, for even uh, an easier production to have this face shield. And that's what we, decided to do. And the interesting part for us is that with the 3D, 3D printing and 3D, 3D printers almost everywhere in the world are currently producing them, um, they need up to one and a half to two hours to produce one face child. And with our machines, we can produce in the same amount of time, 20, 40, 60, depending on the, on the setup. Um, and they're designed in a way that they are sent with DHL, um, very smooth and very fast um, around the world. And those dots here, especially the, the brown ones, those are the countries where in the last week, basically, we either ship machines or we're preparing to ship machines now too, um, which is very interesting for us because in a very short time, suddenly we get a lot of outreach um, and a lot of feedback. Um, and it shows how the, the demand is there. And for us, it's on the other side also great that we're able to deliver within two weeks or two and a half weeks, a finished production basically um, to produce now face shields, but hopefully in the future and in the longer term, other useful products. And that's why we're also working on other things um, like prosthesis kits or pumps for water supplies um, generators for generating electrical power and so on. Um, and basically, there is no limit to the creativity of things we can produce. And that's also what we look, we would like to discuss now together with you um, to see where you see cases where we could use them or first what questions you have uh, for all of this. Did I stop my, my, did, did the, the presentation yes. stop the, the, yes. the screen? Okay. Oh, good. <laughs> Not so easy. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so yeah, so that's basically what we're doing. Um, or what we have doing the last year and now with the face shields. Uh, and first of all, of course, if there are any questions, uh, we're happy to answer them. And then to see, um, yeah but as we can discuss together. Well, I'm happy to ask a few questions. I want to, I think this is really an amazing solution and uh, really excited about it. And um, I'm wondering if you see, uh, well, 
first, uh, what kind of partners are you looking for? Kind of in, in, in you know, in, in um, working on continuing to scale up and look at use cases? On the one side, we are of course looking for partners uh, who want to implement the solutions. Mm -hmm. So either rapidly now uh, with these face shields or in the longer term for, for other production. Um, we're also looking for partners for feedback, what products are needed on those local markets or what ideas they have which could be made. And on the other side, of course, also distribution channels, um, how to get feed on the ground in different areas or in different countries. Um, yeah, and even the last week, we had a lot of contact with NGOs and with different companies who are interested in it. And we are now sorting out um, yeah, the, our next steps. Um, but yeah, I think that's the, the partners. Maybe Rafaela has something else or even Andreas, another idea. But I think that's what we're currently looking for for scaling up. Yeah, and we're also happy when we, when we see the interest from universities and other from schools and to um, build awareness around the world, to build awareness about um, other countries, to have an international exchange. And um, I see sometimes the pupils in Austria learn from the experiences and um, knowledge from other countries and the way around. And so we see as a, as a worldwide, we see us as a not, um, we are based in Austria, so, but uh, we see it, our home as the, the whole world. So, and then to make exchange. Thank you. I have one other question since nobody's jumped in yet. Um, I know it looks like you're using mostly forms, but do you know if there's an avenue to take what you're doing and turn it into a uh, thread, like for manufacturing materials? Um, so on the technical side, um, we would not need to ask our colleagues who are more into it, but this extruder, for instance, so now we talked only about the injection machine. The mm -hmm. extruder, he's making thread, but thicker one. Uh, mm -hmm. so for waving or something. Mm -hmm. um, but it's also something we're looking into um, for producing really thin thread mm -hmm. um, for waving and, and manufacturing. Um, but it's not something which is there yet. Okay. Thank you. And we also um, want to pr um, develop um, other machines, machineries, uh, for example, um, a big uh, scale um, 3D printer which is uh, when which you can um, put the grain uh, granule into without the filament you use so without the filament and also direct uh, 3d printing and very big so not uh, this um, millimeters so you have five millimeters or something else so you can build um, quick um, bigger objects for example thank you Yeah. <laughs> Maybe one question from my side. Um, so it, it's uh, really important to, to get these uh, pre-produced kits, the, um, the, the molds, or uh, is it easy to produce them on your own? Yeah, so there are different ways how to produce the molds. Of course, in the pictures, we saw the CNC milled one. So anybody who has access to a water cutter, a laser cutter, or a CNC mill um, can make the molds themselves, or we can only make a design for them and they make the molds themselves, or other way around, they make a design and we make the molds. Um, but there are also other ways which we're currently experimenting with, um, or we already were doing, for instance, in Uganda, that you make Abdrücke out of concrete, uh, or with clay um, out of wood. So there are a lot of ways how to, how to produce the molds, but it just depends always on the capacity of the production. If you want to produce hundreds or thousands of a piece, then clay, for instance, is not strong enough and will break uh, really fast. But with the aluminum, it's no problem. But of course, that's, a, that's also a challenge uh, in, in scaling solutions or, or starting different uh, objects or products that you first always need a mold um, with the extruder where there's just this thread coming out. Um, you 
don't necessarily need a mold for it. You can have also something else where you wrap the strap around. So you can make, for instance, a basket or something. Mm. Um, if you have a cherry can or something, you can wrap it around and then you have like a, a basket in the shape of a cherry can. Do, do you have sort of a local support, for example, if you're um, yeah, delivering a product to Kenya, uh, that you have an engineer over there who can custom fabricate molds if, 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 and work together with the people? So like, like a service, um, firm service company who, who can also just uh, professionalize on uh, producing the molds? So far, not. Um, in South Africa, for instance, we do have it, um, but not in like every region or every country. Um, in Uganda, for instance, uh, where we are most active probably, and we have a couple of machines in different places. Um, the problem is that CNC milling there is more expensive than doing it in Austria. Uh, and the quality is, is often not the same either. So it's more expensive and poorer quality. So it's easier and faster and cheaper to produce it here and then ship it there. Um, but it's definitely one of our main focuses to also look at this decentralized production of the molds uh, in the, mm -hmm. the, as the next steps. Thank you. I have a question. So the face shields, are they still all produced in Austria or are they are they already produced locally as well? Um, the first, so we shipped them, the first machines with the face shields we shipped last week. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're starting production this weekend in Uganda, two places. In Kenya, probably middle next week, so they arrive on, on, on Saturday or, or Monday there. So at the moment, it's all in Austria with the face shields. The other things are done all over, but the face shields not yet. Um, because we just started three weeks doing it ourselves, then we needed one week to get everything ready, and then it takes now with DHL up to two weeks till it's delivered. So usually it takes only two, three days, and now it's a little bit slower. Um, so it's just starting uh, basically that uh, the production on the grounds in other places. But for example, in um, in Berlin, a nonprofit organization which we are working with in Sri Lanka. Um, which are at the, at the time in, in Germany because of the COVID-19 crisis. And they are using our uh, molds and our machines to produce it locally in Germany. Um, so uh, we gave them um, um, this knowledge exchange uh, via uh, video calls and we talked to each other. So they are still producing the... Uh, they, they are now producing these face shields by themselves. So, yeah, so in Germany, there are two places actually. They're producing about 300 per day. In England, there's a place, uh, and in Spain. So, in Europe, there are, I think, four others which are using our machines to produce it. Um, but outside of Europe, due to the transportation time and so on, not yet. Um, may I come in here? Um... As you have asked where this is uh, done or produced, I'm currently um, in contact with a half dozen NGOs. They're looking into uh, the option to set these machines up uh, within their development projects, especially in regions where the need for protection material uh, is rapidly growing. Um, this morning I read an article about the situation in South America, which is uh, really, really alarming. And Manos and uh, uh, Ecuador, Brazil, Peru. Um, I mean, the, the, the pictures of mass graves, uh, they, are, they are reaching us right now. Um, a production there for the people on the ground, especially when uh, it's difficult to import uh, and receive uh, uh, masks or face shields, uh, could be one mosaic of the stone uh, to further. Um, fight against uh, infection with uh, the virus. Um, but it's, um, yeah, it's developing. Um, we are also interested to uh, get to know donors, um, foundations or uh, companies as uh, part of their CSR uh, 
initiatives to, to fund machines for NGOs. They would love and welcome uh, to set up um, these machines and with one NGO uh, with 180 offices around the world, um, we are in touch and they have already agreed to do so and we found a sponsor to do so. So, um, but it's just the beginning. I mean, the, the face shield is a, an urgent need for uh, people on the ground, uh, especially in, in regions uh, like South America, Asia, Africa. The resource plastic uh, waste is available nearly everywhere. Uh, what you need is, is, is energy, um, uh, electricity, uh, and that's it. And then you can produce out of a, a two liter PET bottle, you can produce a shield. Um, and um, yeah, let's see uh, how it, uh, it develops, but uh, we're confident that uh, it can contribute to fight against the widespread of the virus. I have a question also to, uh, for Andreas Papp, actually. Uh, I was in contact uh, with a friend of yours, Mr. Shana, yesterday. And I know he has a uh, experience in the region as well. So the uh, some um, NGOs you mentioned are they also in my regions? Because I saw on the on the map, Surin showed us before that my region is still pretty pretty blank. But and I would like to to help you to change that because I really think not only for the face shield but also like plastic waste is everywhere and the uh, plastic recycling also on a on a small scale is, is a huge topic, uh, especially in Iraq and and in Syria, of course because so much of the industry is completely gone there. I mean, it's politically very sensitive, but there is like hundreds of, of NGOs who I think would be ready. And I also would be very, very interested to, to, to pick up your solution. Well, um, the answer is, is yes. I have worked in all of the countries you have mentioned. Uh, in, in Syria, I was in 2017, I visited Aleppo uh, just two weeks after the bombardment stopped. So I know the, the SOS uh, Syria president very well. I can make a contact easily and quickly. Jordan, the same story, Gaza, Lebanon. Um, yeah, a handful of NGOs and representatives are still there. I do know well. Um, and I'm happy to continue our conversation afterwards about uh, the opportunities we can we can raise together definitely yeah and i think you already reached out in an email to us um <laughs> a couple of weeks ago or yeah and to be honest our our issue not our issue but we there was this huge demand for these facials in austria so that the last two weeks we set up a production from zero to having a couple of people now producing these facials locally and now on the on the side, we were reaching out to the first NGOs and so on, shipped the first machines towards sub saharan Africa, um, because they were the, the strongest connections already as, as the past. Um, but now the shift goes totally the other way around. So now we are really targeting and, and reaching out um, and will for sure also come back to you um, on this topic. And there's a lot going on at the moment, yes. Um, can I ask a little bit more about your model? Because I want to make sure, sure I understand it. So uh, are you, are predominantly community groups using this or NGOs using this to produce different types of products and specifically face shields? Um, apart from the face shields, um, okay. it's very different. So we have universities in the UK, in Sweden, in Germany. Um, we have community groups. Uh, in Europe. We have NGOs in Uganda. Um, we have private people in, in Ecuador, the Galapagos Islands. Um, we have tourist destinations in Mexico. Um, so the field is very wide and that's also a challenge for us to address a specific uh, a niche or a branch or an area. And also on the on, we've seen on the map, um, it's just wherever somebody comes. Um, but now with the face shields, we're targeting specifically, basically, NGOs and companies um, in those countries where they feel there's a need and there's the opportunity to... The interesting thing now with the face shield is also that it's 
something which can be sold almost mm -hmm. anywhere at the moment. Um, in, in Kenya, we got reached out uh, from hospitals that on the local markets, the prices are double of the prices in Austria um, for these what, face shields or protective equipment at the moment. Um, so if they produce it there locally, um, they can be very, very competitive on the market. The machines would amortize in less than two or three weeks. So it's also from the business perspective now with the face shields and this current need very interesting, rather than just producing rulers or abacus for schools and donating them as an NGO or trying to set up a social business around it. Um, so yeah, and that's what we now are targeting uh, in this time to really get companies or partners um, who are interested in producing for the first step this PPE equipment and then on the next step, useful products um, which maybe also they came up with and say, hey, we want to produce um, ventilators or whatever. Okay, um, then a follow-up question is, I think that you're gonna get the contact information from, from these calls. Would it be possible for you to share something, just maybe a one-pager or maybe the presentation you gave so that, that um, I could share it with a, a few NGOs here locally to see if sure. they might I'm very happy for it, yeah. Okay, great. Perfect. If there are no other questions, uh, I guess we just, we have each other's uh, contact information. Uh, so we will definitely send you a follow-up information kit, a ring Havik uh, as soon as possible. Uh, and yeah, and see um, where we're going and what's happening. So very, very thankful for your time. Thank you very much, everyone. Yeah, we, we keep Thank it. you very much. And Thank you so much. see you hopefully sometime soon somewhere else. Christine, Thank for you. all the support and setting this up. Huh? Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank all you. All the best. Ciao. Bye.